Should Albert Pujols be an all-star in 2022? His stats might say no, but a new clause in the CBA might say yes, as the legend could get a final goodbye in Los Angeles. Also, who is some low-hanging fruit that the Cardinals can target at the trade deadline? All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? I'm Lucas. That's JD. Welcome to Locked on Cardinals for Wednesday, July the 6th. Hard to believe we're already almost a week into July, but we are just days away from learning who the all-star starters are, which is where we're going to start our conversation today. JD, how are you today? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself, Lucas? You feeling all right after uh, the last game? I don't know. The game was, was kind of it was rough, so we'll talk about the uh, rotation <laughs> a little bit in, in, uh, in a little while because this rotation needs some help. We talked about it a little bit on Tuesday's show, but um, you've got some ideas that we'll discuss on some maybe more quick options, uh, low-hanging fruit, as you like to say. But first, we're going to start a discussion about Albert Pujols because it was reported by Ken Rosendahl of The Athletic that there's a new clause in the CBA, the Collective Bargaining Agreement, that says that the commissioner has the right to place one or under certain circumstances more than one player on an all-star team to recognize their career achievements. So somebody like an Albert Pujols or a Yadier Molina being an all-star this season despite their numbers not being all-star caliber – just, just putting it bluntly, they're they're not, and that's that's okay. They're 39 and 41, whatever years old they are. But this brings together an, an interesting discussion from the Cardinal standpoint, because Pujols is at least right off the bat an obvious option to be a candidate for the All Star game under these circumstances. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, who wouldn't want to see Albert at least get one at bat in an All Star <laughs> game? I mean, you, you look at his stats over the years. So I pulled some of the uh, most noteworthy ones. There's plenty of them to go around. Yeah. Uh, second all time in RBIs, 2,167 behind Hank Aaron. He's fifth all time in home runs, 683 behind A Rod. Uh, fifth all time in doubles, 676 behind Ty Cobb. Ninth all time in hits, 12th all time in runs. And uh, I don't know if you know this stat, but he's got 117 stolen bases, Lucas which means he's only 1,289 behind Ricky Henderson. <laughs> he's right there. He's right there with those wheels of his, those <laughs> sneaky wheels of Albert Pujols. But the guy's had an amazing career. He's one of the greatest hitters of all time. I, I get upset when people say, just one of the best right-handed hitters. No, no. All time, doesn't matter what side of the plate he's hitting from. He's one of the greatest of all time, and I think he deserves uh, a chance to say goodbye to the fans one last time at an All-Star game. I do too. And there's there an article by, again, Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic that kind of laid out this clause. And this was kind of an idea thrown around by Cardinal fans earlier this year when Pools made his return. Get him to the All Star game. And I, I saw that he was third or fourth in DHs in the National League, which was, mm -hmm. you know, kind of cool to get that recognition. But if, if this clause wasn't in there, I would probably be anti putting him in the All Star game just because it's Albert and you have these circumstances, right? But since the clause is already in the CBA, and this is something that they knew they ag agreed upon an agreement then yeah, I think that Pujols is the candidate in the National League. Uh, you also have to talk about Yadier Molina, though, because uh, obviously they're on different levels of the you know, of caliber of players with, with when you talk about greatness of all time. But Molina also, you can make an argument, deserves recognition. But I think if you had to choose one or the other, it's Albert. I mean, you might say as a Cardinal fan, oh, but Yadi stayed with the Cardinals for, you know, what was it, 17 years, and now we're at left. And, but when you look at the career – there's all due respect to Molina and his Hall of Fame worthy career. There's really no comparison, right? That that Albert needs to be selected for this All Star team under this clause and over, over Yachty, for just to put it pretty bluntly. Yeah, I mean Yachty. Don't get me wrong; he's he's been an amazing talent. He's one of the best defensive catchers of all time. Offensively, you know what? He got he got better as uh, time went on. But uh, Albert is one of the greatest players of all time in the history of baseball, and he's just a better player all around than Yadier Molina has been. I mean, the, the yeah. stats don't lie, man. That's just the way it is. And, you know, having him also have the uh, played in the American league as well for a while. Um, you know, he's, he's been on both sides in major league baseball where, you know, fans on both sides in the American and national league have been able to see him. And it'd be a nice chance for him to say goodbye, kind of right off into the sunset 
Uh, well, hopefully, you know, he gets a chance to do something in the playoffs for the Cardinals. But as far as uh, an all-star game, I think this would be fantastic. I agree. I think it's a win-win also when you look at the fact that the All-Star game is in Los Angeles, where he, yes. he he played for the Dodgers for a few months, but he was in L.A. Anaheim area. Still don't mm-hmm. even know if they're the, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim or the Anaheim <laughs> or wherever their park is. That's for Los Angelesans to discuss, but played in that area for, for close to 10 years, just as they did in the St. Louis area. Yeah. So it, it's another, another, another layer to the story, if you will, if Albert was able to get that send-off. In, in, in all honesty, he deserves it. You know, it, yeah. It, 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 Go ahead. It's and it, it's not, and it's not just a Cardinals thing either. It no. just happens to be a Cardinals thing right. this year. But <laughs> I I love embracing the history of the game. And yep. when somebody's been around as long as Albert has and has performed at the level that he did for so long, I think he deserves the recognition. Over the American League, same article uh, was Miggy Cabrera, who's hitting three hundred this year. It's not like he's right. 180, whatever, whatever Albert's at right now. But uh, he's another one. If you were to say, you know, had made the announcement that, hey, this is going to be my last year. He's another one that I'm like, yeah, you deserve it as well. And I think this is something that can happen just about every year. Um, mm-hmm. You're usually going to find somebody who's who's worthy of uh, being recognized, even if they, you know, aren't up to par as far as all star stats that season. But I, I just I, you hate to see the guys that are, are veterans just kind of disappear and yeah. uh, without being able to say goodbye. I remember the first time that I saw something like this happen was Ozzy Smith back in 1996. And uh, his numbers weren't great, but he got voted into the all star game. It wasn't like a special thing, but he got voted in, got the standing mm-hmm. ovation, got the Ozzy chance from the crowd. And it was just a really cool and special moment. And I think it'd be sad if Albert wasn't able to enjoy that moment himself in L.A. I agree. It's something that that, that transcends fandom. You know, it's a baseball thing, like you mentioned. Yeah. And you know, Miguel Cabrera, you mentioned he could be an all-star just his numbers alone. <laughs> you don't necessarily yeah. with a 300 average, he clipped 500 home runs and everything. But yeah. I mean, the one thing that that pains me so much about Albert and, and him leaving. I mean, I was. 11 years old when he left. So it was a real emotional time, right? In terms of, you know, 11 year old love in baseball. Is yeah. it all of it, or most of his milestones have come in LA? He had yeah. 500, he had 600, he got 3,000 hits in LA, you know, all, all the, the, the bigger ones, right? I mean, obviously you saw 2,000 in St. Louis and one, two, three, and 400 home runs, respectively, and all of the RBI and everything. I definitely really think his legacy remains in St. Louis because obviously, that 10 year stretch of dominance is unlike any other 10 year stretch we've ever seen, whether mm. it's right handed hitter, left handed hitter, switch hitter, pitcher, closer, starter, whatever. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, the, the, from 2001 to 2011, it was no question as to who was the best in baseball. And yeah. that in and of itself, and also you throw on another, another level of this is what he's done for the, his community. Roberto Clemente, award winner, always, you know, the Pujols Foundation. Uh, he, he's opened us new. Numerous uh, Miracle League parks, which is uh, parks for players with uh, disabilities to play. Uh, mm-hmm. You add on the humanitarian aspect of Albert Pujols, that, that just adds another, another layer to it. You know, he, he's a very good ambassador for the game. It's not like you're trying to get in a Mark McGuire or Barry Bonds, all due respect, that you could argue, you know, the steroids area. It's like Albert has that cloud around him, or like, oh, he's a bad clubhouse guy or bad. He's a great person, was a great player in his day. I think it's a no-brainer when you look at the National League, and you could argue three candidates from the Cardinals are in the National League with Wainwright, Molina, and Yachty, even though Wainwright isn't said he's retiring yet. But I yeah. think it's a no-brainer slam dunk. I think it's a PR win. I think it's a baseball win. Even Houston Astros fans, Brad Lidge would probably even be on board with this one. <laughs> yeah, anybody, I think, would be on board with this move, Albert, to the All-Star game. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think it's something that needs to happen. And again, this game doesn't matter anymore. So right. it's not like we're altering anything that's going to happen in the World Series later <laughs> on. If he gets in a bat or two, like it's not going to hurt. Any- it's only a positive. It's not going to hurt anything. Agree. And I think another reason I'm like, OK, with this clause, for, for lack of a better phrase, is that it, it's not taking away somebody's spot. Right, it's right. in addition to the roster. It's not like Poole's going to be on there, and uh, and Tommy Edmonds not right, or mm-hmm. or, her, or you know somebody else who should be an All Star won't be. It's going to be an additional spot, purely for recognition. Can play as you mentioned, get in that bat, get a, get a whatever. Maybe play first base. I mean, it's an All Star game. Who knows? Or maybe, maybe he'll go back to third base. I think he played there recently. Uh, but also, <laughs> you know, it'll be his first All Star game since 2015, so he gets to go back, kind of experience that. He did it plenty in St. Louis. And as we kind of wrap up this part, I want to ask you, JD. I think it's easy to say now but obviously a big part of albert coming back was is he going to get 700 you know is he going to get to that that bigger yeah 700 is he going to get to that number i don't think he is now 
even in season before the season started, it had to be 21 home runs, which is going to be tough. But I, I still think that he can make it close. I just don't think he gets to 700. What do you think? No, I don't think so either. Um, his at bats clearly are, are starting to decline. Is yeah. he's not getting the plate appearances anymore? They pushed him early on. They were like, "Hey, they let's did. ride the 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 thunder that he was bringing." Just the <laughs> Just the energy that he was bringing to the stadiums, you know, people were even in the away stadiums, people were excited to see Albert in a Cardinal uniform again and hitting for St. Louis. And even now it's it's just started to fade. And, you know, he's we knew he wasn't going to be that great. We were hoping for right. the best. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, clearly taking a bats away from a team that's in a pennant chase with, uh, you know, you got other guys who deserve the at bats and are, are mm -hmm. better hitters right now, like. Yep, has deserves to get the at bats right now. You can't really bench him and say you're trying to win and put Albert up there instead. It just mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. No, I think, you know, if it's with the Tigers, you know, their fourth place, <laughs> place in the central, maybe sure. you can throw them out there, you know, five, six days a week. But Yadi's yeah. like, Albert's lucky now to get five, six at bats a week. And it, it's a pain. Yeah. You know, I, I hope it doesn't get to the point where it starts to tarnish his legacy, you know, where you start yeah. to see it, where this is the memory people have of him. Right. But at the same time, it's like, you know, he, he was so good for so long in St. Louis that I think his, at least in St. Louis, his legacy, his memory cannot be tarnished, at least not on the baseball field for, for that matter. So now nah, I still remember the poo holes with three home runs against the right. Rangers of the world. That's the Albert. I remember the guy I see <laughs> now true. is it's great to see, but I mean, he's not, he's a shell of the man that I saw back then winning a world series for the, for the Cardinals. I agree. That, that's a good point. That that to me is a lasting memory. You know, hopefully yeah. it's another big home runs, but you know, I still have the World Series DVD. You know, I carried around <laughs> or not carried, but I travel around with it in my places that I've lived at. So I was gonna say what yeah. you yeah. carried around <laughs> with you all the time. All right, that's obsessive, yes. Lucas. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I'm healthy. I promise. I promise. <laughs> uh, but but nevertheless, let us know what you think. Drop a comment in the YouTube section. Uh, you can email the show lockedoncards@gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter. I'm LJ Fastball. He's JD Sports Radio. We'd love to have a conversation with you guys about what you think Albert should do uh, or what, what Major League Baseball should do rather with the All-Star game. But sadly, we do have to talk a little bit about yesterday's game. We're going to sprinkle mm -hmm. that in here. But the, the main mm -hmm. topic of discussion is starting pitching. And this is probably going to be a, at least a portion of a segment until the, the problem is fixed. But once yeah. again, JD has come on with, with some new suggestions for more low-hanging fruit that the Cardinals can and should go after. But before we get that, we do want to tell you about BlueNile.com because whether you're ready to pop the question or you just want to celebrate a milestone moment, you can get find jewelry with that is unique as her with BlueNile.com. It's online shopping at BlueNile.com. It has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft the perfect diamond ring, and each ring is one of a kind. Or if you're just looking for fine jewelry and you're having trouble looking, don't worry about it. I had trouble too, but Blue Nile jewelry experts are on hand 24-7, available via the phone or the chat to help you find a memorable gift at every single budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Sports listeners. $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive does include engagement, so don't don't fret. It does include engagement. Use code locked on L O C K E D O N. That's locked on. And plus, every order is shipped, insured, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. You can shop stress free and find your forever peace at BlueNile.com today. Andre Palante had his his first clunker. You know, after we, we give him praise on, on Tuesday's show, <laughs> he decides to, to show how, how human he is. Nor Nolan Gorman made you look good in the first inning. Andre Palante could not return the favor uh, to me. But both you, J.D., and I, John O'Neill on the broadcast said that he was just throwing beach balls up there. It just wasn't his day on the mound yesterday. Yeah, yeah. a couple of hangers specifically to Austin Riley, the, uh, the home run and the uh, RBI double. Those were just right over the plate. And at that level, you just can't. They're not going to no. miss those. So, uh, I mean, he he had a tough go. Uh, bullpen looked great, though. If you want to, yeah. you want to be positive, Lucas. Uh, another <laughs> four and a third uh, shutout by the bullpen. Only two hits allowed. One walk, five Ks. I will give Palante some credit, though. Uh, at least he was attacking the strike zone. Uh, mm -hmm. I still, I still get more upset of watching starting pitchers like just they're, they're constantly walking people, or they're just you know they're just outside of the strike zone, and they're not they're not attacking the strike zone. He was. It just happened that Atlanta was hitting them. And so they got 10 hits off them, seven runs. They hit two dingers. You know what? These are the kind of games you just got to you know, throw away. You try to learn from them. 
and uh, you just got to move on to the next one. It happens to the best of them. I agree. I mean, even uh, Bob Gibson had his bad starts every once in a while, but uh, on the field, you can just kind of brush past and move on and go about your day. When you're off the field, when you're a John Mozeliak, a Michael Gersh, you got decisions to make. You got so, some some problems to fix, and the Cardinals certainly have their fair share of problems. Yesterday, we talked a lot about some external options. We talked about Bumgarner, maybe Sundergaard, Luis Castillo, mm-hmm. if the Reds want to continue to give up their team for nothing, as they've, they've <laughs> tended to do over the last calendar year. There's got to be some option that is chosen quickly soon yeah. because this problem is not getting any better anytime soon. Yeah, so um, if you're, you're looking for some pitching that might be available – and you don't have to give up the farm. We talked about some of the top prospects like Walker. You're not going to move these guys, nor do you want to. That's not right. the idea. I Honestly, I wouldn't move them for Frankie Montas. I don't, I don't think he's that great where no. you need to move one of your, your top prospects. I don't think he's worth it. Uh, there are other options out there. So if we could run through a couple of them. Now, I brought one up in the last show. I just kind of threw it out there. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know, if the Cubs were okay with, I would take a Wade Miley if he's healthy. He's been hurt all yeah. year. He's hardly pitched, but previous year in Cincinnati he had a pretty good year through a no hitter. Yeah. yeah. Left-hander throws strikes is uh, he's also what I love too. He's one of those pitchers that is up tempo throw. He grabs the ball, throws it. He's, he's he just keeps it moving. Keep it moving. Mm-hmm. I like that. So uh, a guy like him would be good. Uh, another uh, person in the division, Jose Quintana from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Is another one yeah. uh, that, that will be available. The the Pirates will likely <laughs> move him. Uh, he's somebody you can look at. Uh, how about Chad Cool, former Pirate, now with yeah. Colorado, not having a bad year in Colorado so far. Uh, Michael Pineda, remember that guy? Remember him? <laughs> well, he's yeah. back with Detroit. Pine tar everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he's back and he's on the field and he's throwing again. And he he started off the season well and then uh, ended up getting hurt, got hit by a line drive, so uh, has been out, but. He's back, but again, these are guys uh, low hanging fruit. Th- these are Mosaic's words. These are I didn't I didn't, I didn't make the low hanging fruit term <laughs> up. That was John, okay. And uh, so these are some of the options that we're used to as Cardinal fans, seeing them kind of pluck those guys during trades and stuff here when when they don't want to give up too much and they're like not necessarily looking for a one or a two, but more mm-hmm. of a, a back of the rotation kind of guy, a four. More likely a five with these names that I'm throwing out there for you. But all of them are cheap. Uh, Zach Davies was one we brought up. Uh, he's another one that's cheap. So uh, another one that might be a little more expensive. But uh, And I just don't know how he would mesh, actually, in the locker room. But Zach Grinke from Kansas City, a little more expensive. $13 million was uh, for a one-year deal. Yeah. But he's kind of a weirdo. I mean, we've all heard the stories about him. So yeah. I don't know how well he'd be perceived in that locker room. But he's somebody that maybe... you give up a mid-tier prospect to, to bring them on. I don't know. But these are these are some of the things that we're looking at as the rotation continues to struggle, at least the back end. Uh, mm-hmm. We did get some news on Matt's, though. Is that correct? It, it's a possibility he might be back sooner than we thought. That's a correct. This was tweeted out by a Cardinals beat writer for MLB.com, John Denton, gave us this report that the Cardinals are now considering starting Stephen Matt's at the major league level on Thursday instead of throwing – another rehab start because Matt's it was free rehab galore for just about everybody on the Cardinals. It, it seemed like, yeah. but a lot of different people were scheduled to make rehab assignments over the course of the next two to three days. O'Neal uh, starting t- tomorrow or today, excuse me, on Wednesday, uh, you, you're going to see Dickerson start t- today as well. And Matt's as, as well. Katie knew Katie, we were tweeting all this out, but now with this news from John Denton saying that the Cardinals might push him up just like they did Flaherty. It makes you wonder, <sighs> are they going to make that mistake again? Right. Or is maybe maybe there's something we don't know that Matt's is further along in his rehab than Flaherty was. But you also got to look at that Flaherty was hurt for a long time to start yeah. the season. Right. And do you want to make that mistake again? Like, is that the reason Flaherty got hurt again and get back to the I.L.? Who's to say? Right. You're, you're right. going to be shooting it. You're going to be shooting the dark. You're playing a roulette with that answer. But I do yeah. think that with that decision backfiring, you and I were texting about it. That is a desperation move. To have Stephen so. Matz start, and you're the one who pointed it out, so I'm not trying to take credit for it, but I'm just agreeing with you that that is yeah. the, that is the definition of a desperation move the, of Stephen yeah. Matz coming up to start sooner rather than later. And I, I it's hard to say that it's a bad move because the Cardinals might just be that desperate. Yeah, uh, and I don't understand what you are thinking you'll get out of it. Are you hoping for three innings from him? I mean, if he's only on bullpen sessions and we're not right. even the rehab starts, what would he be at? Like. 
45 pitches, something like that. I mean, that's, I don't know, man. Well, <laughs> I, I, personally, I don't, I don't like it. Personally, I don't no. like it. I would, I would let him rest until after the all-star break. You have a whole second half of the season to make sure he's healthy. You're going to need him. Okay. Yeah. Clearly, looking at what we've got going on in the rotation right now, you're going to yeah. need him. And a healthy Steven Matz uh, is, you know, he's a three or four in your rotation. You need that kind of guy. You need a, a veteran presence. He's left-handed. And you're going to need him in the second half. I would not push him. I would do what I can to maybe even a bullpen game out of uh, who you got left. Maybe bring somebody up. Uh, let Libertor again. Let him let him toss two innings or something if you got to do it. I, I'm just not pushing Matz. That just doesn't make sense to me. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm looking at uh, uh, an Angel Rondo to, to make another spot start. Yes! Another person who made a start for, for Stephen Matz when the last when he threw four pitches yeah. to Pittsburgh on the, the and, Peacock game, that the Sunday Peacock game. You know, you have yeah. options in the minor leagues. Jake Woodford, maybe he could get a call up and get a major league start. I think that Woodford needs to be Absolutely. used more anyways. Uh, Libertor is actually starting tonight. Um, so okay. he, he's in the rotation anyway. So that, that it's an answer to see Libertor at the major league level. But I, I agree. I wouldn't rush Matt's even before the, the, the Flaherty decision. And that's one that I defended in the moment that I thought, Hey, trust your guy. You know, if Flaherty is going to say he's good to go, he's good to go. Right. Yeah. But, it, or, and I also misspoke. Uh, Libertor is throwing on Thursday at Atlanta. So the option would be then to push Libertor back to Friday. My uh, bigger, gotcha. uh, bigger pardon there. So it's Mike okay. list tonight, Libertor Thursday in the rotation. But also, you look at it, why make Matt travel? I mean, he was supposed to start in Memphis anyways. Keep him close to home. I mean, that, that's just a small little thing. But I think we're on the same page that, that don't rush it. Yes, you need to make decisions, but don't rush the guy that you're going to need. Because yeah. whether people like it or not, whether people like the Matt's move or not, Steven Matt's is one of the top two or three guys in this rotation. And that's a yeah. you, can, you can say that's good or bad or, or indifferent, but at the end of the day, he's somebody that you don't want to rush back because if when, when you rush things back from injury – Bad things tend to happen, and we yes, saw that. With yes, Flaherty. they do. So, yes, bad things yes. happened yesterday, and we talked a little bit briefly about the positives out of the bullpen. I want to highlight that a little bit more, as well as talk about the negatives in the offense because the offense starting to sputter a little bit at a really bad Ooh. time. Uh, but, but first, Jay, I want to ask you: are you are you a betting man? Uh, you know what? I'm very careful with my money. <laughs> so I, uh, when it comes to betting, like I'm always, it doesn't even matter if it's like 99% it's going to happen. I'm still like, but there's that 1%. So I get a little nervous, but if I were to bet, there's one place I would go, Lucas. It would be betonline.net. It's correct. not only it's not only your number one source, JD. It's everybody's number one source for all your betting and sports info. You can find the latest sports developments, league news and news, all these things that can help you smartly place your bets, including this year's Major League Baseball scores, as well as sports like MMA, boxing, and golf. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Head to the website today, betonline.net, or you can use your mobile device. Don't even have to wait till you get home. Just pop it up on your phone on the go to learn more about the trends and action of today and tomorrow. BetOnline is where the game starts. All right, so Tuesday's game, you mentioned it. It was one to forget. But one one positive, and you threw out a couple stats, the the, the five innings that the bullpen was able to throw, or four plus, whatever it was, of, of two-hit mm-hmm. baseball. Packy Naughton was impressive. I think he's I mean, some really, team, really impressive, really impressive for being a NASCAR driver too. Packy not that's a, <laughs> that's a NASCAR driver's name. And you can't, you can't tell me it's not that that dude doesn't race cars in his off season. He, he very well might, as long as he doesn't get hurt racing cars, he can do whatever he wants in the off. Just don't pull a Fernando Tatis and get hurt playing soccer. Or so, yeah. However, uh, Fernando got, got hurt, but Bopin stepped up on a day when the, the starter Palante did not. And I think that even though we could talk about these big problems that the Cardinals have in spot appearances, this bullpen has shined, especially the back three. And yesterday was no different with, with not Fernandez and Thompson. Yeah, they uh, they looked fantastic. You know, they came out and uh, they stomped out the Braves. I mean, they were hitting everything that was, that <laughs> was coming coming off Palante. And then, uh, you know, they switch it up and you bring in a lefty. And wow, Fernandez, dude, how good does that guy look right now? And I, I feel like he's been in their system for like 15 years now. Like, yeah. like we've been waiting for it. We've been waiting for it. And then, boom, here he is. And he's ginormous and he's throwing smoke and he's throwing strikes which is the most oh. important thing. Again, I, I'll hammer that home every single show we do. As long <laughs> as you're throwing strikes, you're, at least you're giving yourself a chance because if you're walking them, nobody can help you, man. You're on your own. Right. So uh, it, it was nice to see. And if uh, only the offense could have uh, cashed in a few times, I mean, what they end up with? Uh, was it 13 left on? 
12. 12 yeah, and 13. Was, it was a it was yeah, that was my next point. Is that, you know, <laughs> th- th- this offense is is not is doing what you exactly don't need it to do at, at the wrong time when you're pitching, struggling, when you're trying to find a way. You know, things started out really well. You know, they were going. They stranded, I think, eleven or twelve yesterday, and went one for eleven again yesterday. One of scoring position, you saw them get three straight two out hits in the first inning. If Ronald Acuna isn't in the outfield, maybe you, you send Gorman to second. Maybe you send <laughs> Nolan home. You know, maybe something changes, but you get three straight two out hits. And then for the rest of the game, it's very hard to score off the Atlanta Braves. Anderson went five strong, McHugh two, and they finished up with Matt Sick and Stevens. The only real positive is that you only struck out six times. You know, the Cardinals have been struck, striking out in bunches recently. But True. what what kills me is the, 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 the 12 left, left on base. Yeah. I mean, this offense is too good, even with Romine in it, even with uh, Kisner getting an appearance today, even with you know, Bader O'Neill out, some of the key guys out. This offense is too good to be leaving eleven guys on in there and yeah. any twelve guys on in any in any game in any game. It just can't yeah. happen. Yeah, the um the most frustrating at bats that I saw, and I guess they weren't horrible at bats, but just the way they ended were the Dylan Carlson at bats, like uh, the, yep. the weak ground balls to first base mm-hmm. where he's just clearly off balance. I mean, we haven't seen the good Dylan Carlson yet this year, and we're we're in July, guys. I mean, that yep. he's a guy that you know, I'm not saying you expected him to hit 20 bombs and, you know, hit 285 or whatever, but you expected a little more than we're getting so far. And it's just, uh, you, you know, you see him hit the home run the other night and you're just like, there it is. There's the swing that we've oh, all been yeah. waiting for. <laughs> and then you get these where he's way out in front on the ball. And it's just, uh, we could use that because you need that. You need that even with Nolan Arnato hitting well and Goldschmidt doing their thing in three and four spots. When you get down to that six hole, you know, we're, we're in the same place we were mm-hmm. when, uh, you know, whoever would be the young who be young. Next, yeah. And he's just a hole in the lineup. It's just, right mm-hmm. now there's a hole there and the job's just not getting done in the back half of your lineup. And, it, and it's hurting the team, man. Five left on by Dylan Carlson by himself uh, against the Braves. And you just can't have that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point. I think that any lineup needs more than just two guys going. And right now you have two guys going and Goldschmidt and, and Arenado. But I think that's what made this offense so deadly last year is you had Tyler O'Neill that you could slot in behind Arenado. Then you had three guys to choose from. Okay, I yeah. don't want Golden to pitch me. Let's pitch around him. Oh, wait, Nolan's there. Okay, I don't want him. Let's pitch around him. Let's go to Tyler. Oh, shoot O'Neill. Like, you just can't. Yeah. You, you, you had no option in that middle part of the lineup. But, I mean, to your point, in 224 at-bats this season, Carlson with five home runs, he's hitting 250, got an OPS of 724, uh, 231 in his last seven games. Uh, those are mostly since he's been off the, the IL recently. Mm-hmm. You, just, you just can't have it. I think Carlson is somebody that's too talented to be doing this for too long. I think that it's reasonable to expect him to get to 260, 270, get to that 18 to 23 home run range. You know, especially at the switch hitter as a switch hitter, I think he could do some damage as a switch hitter um, going forward. And he plays a dynamic outfield as well. But and to to clarify, uh, just so people don't know, the Cardinals stranded the the team on base, left on base, is at the end of an inning. When you say Dylan Carlson stranded, that's whenever he was batting. So he could have when it grounded out with one out that goes against him, not against the team. Just to to clarify Mm -hmm. that for everybody else. But but now, I mean. You could say that the mentality needs to be a must win every day, but these next two games in Atlanta are about as must win as you can get. Three game losing streak. You use five of your last six now. You need to find a way to split. Good teams, playoff yeah. teams don't get swept on the road. They just don't. Yeah. And that's where the, the team has really struggled. Their uh, record away from Bush Stadium is well below 500 right now. So um, Atlanta's on fire right now. I don't want to yeah. take anything away from the that's Braves. A good point. Who, have been playing outstanding baseball for uh, for about two weeks now. I mean, they're only a couple games back behind the Mets now, who, you know, at half. the beginning of the year just took off. You know, right. it, it wasn't even close. And remember, the Braves were like, what's wrong with the champs? We don't know. Right. They, they've figured it out. And uh, it's not a shocker that when Acuna comes back from injury, they start to do everything again. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not taking anything away from the Braves. But, again, you got you got to beat the good teams just like you beat mm-hmm. the bad teams. So, uh, to come away with a split would – would be a huge victory for the Cardinals. They're going to try and do it on the, the arms of either Miles Michaelis and Steven Matz or, or Michaelis and Libertor. <laughs> that will open rain to be seen. But if it's Matz, like you said, you can only really expect three to four innings. And I think regardless of who goes on Thursday, you got to expect Michaelis to go seven or eight strong today. Like that, that needs to be the expectation. And I would argue that unless it's like a seven-run lead or seven-run deficit, 
you're going to see Gallegos and Helsley tomorrow. I mean, they just haven't pitched in so long. You're going to need to. Yeah. But they're going to be going into play. They're three games back of Milwaukee right now for first place. Currently sit um, tied with the Phillies for the third wild card spot. That's you know they're, they're, the Cardinals are struggling so bad. They're getting close to being out of the playoffs. They're getting real close, and that's why we we talk about these pitching decisions. The, the first two days you're on, we're talking the pitching because pitching needs to be good. So before we leave, this is more for YouTube people. You you have a, you have a mug that you you flashed during the uh, the ah. ad. I, I forgot to introduce <laughs> introduce Fredbert to us, JD. Had a little ladies Fredbert and, mug. L- ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Fredbert. <laughs> He's an that outstanding, awesome. outstanding cup. And to be honest with you, Lucas, this is a, a child sippy cup <laughs> is what is what it no actually kidding. is. And so I like to have, you know, for coffee mugs and stuff, I always like to have whatever team is in season at the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, during hockey season, I got the blues and so forth. And so I, I was like, I need a I need a cool St. Louis Cardinals coffee mug. And mm-hmm. I couldn't find anything that was really all that great. It was all the same. You know, here's the logo. Ooh. Yeah. And then. I saw the kid's sippy cup and I was like, That's you know awesome. what? I can pull this off. I can do this. That's incredible. Yes, I might get made fun of by adults, but that's fine. <laughs> it just shows you how big of a fan I am. There's no there's no better way to end the show than with Fred Bird. So if you're not watching on YouTube, we appreciate you listening, but I encourage you to go check out YouTube as Fred Bird is making an appearance. So uh, that was awesome. So I'm sure tomorrow we'll talk about more about pitching and hopefully more about how Michaelis is hopefully dominant against the Braves as the Cardinals try and turn around these losing, losing skids. But from JD, I'm Lucas. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday.